So the other day, one of my buddies and his son uh, were looking at doing a, their next uh, Pinewood Derby car, and they wanted something that looked a little fancier than what they did last year. And they knew that I had a, a CNC machine in my garage, and you know we'd been talking about it. So they, they wanted to come over and see what we could do. So we started out, um, I'm just going to roll this back. This is Fusion 360, and we started out with just a parametric model. So I'm just going to jump forward a little bit. Uh, there we go. So we start out with just the block of wood that you would have in um, that you would buy from your your little starter kit. We added parametrics to it, so you can see here that I have all the length, width, the nail diameters, all that kind of stuff, and I can change this. You know, if if, if for whatever reason we wanted to make this longer, I could make that eight millimeters or eight eight uh, inches down to seven inches. You'll notice the screw hole and everything adjust with it. So we basically start out with a block of wood, and then we spend a little time on what the you know what the main um, kind of top contour was going to look like. So we went into the sculpt environment and basically just created a, a nice little shape of kind of what we wanted it to look like, and we split that away from the upper shell. So you'll notice if I return forward a couple times, um, let's. Uh, kind of play this forward. So you'll notice now that we have our stock. Let's jump forward a little bit more. Let's see where we split it. There we go. So here I can turn off the surface and I can turn off the, the top part. And we can see that that's kind of what we ended up with as the top contour or the side contour. And then we created a, a sketch from the top. And Let's take a look at the top. You can see that we've created this little outline that was kind of how we wanted to cut it, um, just as our first eyeball. And from there, we created another sculpt surface, which I'll turn on. And you know, we extruded that as a T-spline surface and got something like that. And then with with T-spline, we were able to easily go in, or the sculpt environment, easily able to go in and kind of move these things around. So if I wanted that to bow out, you know, more or less, we could do that. Um, so once we did that, again, we split that and, and got rid of that one, mirrored the surface to the other side, split the other side, so we essentially had that shape for our car. Keep in mind, it's still all parametric. Um, at that point, we brought in the wheels and you know assembled all the wheels in place and added joints. I'll just skip forward a little bit. Um, so we had uh, all the joints. We also wanted to have a nice smooth fillet around the top surface, so we did that. And then just continued to add some decals on here. Um, I put the, the nails in, so we had all the nails in, mostly just for kind of the graphic side of it. And if I just jump to the very end, we can see what that looks like. So pretty easy, created two T-spline surfaces on top of the, the stock, you know, cut those away and mirrored the one surface to the other side and you know did a split and removed all the, the excess geometry. Um, so from here, uh, a couple things. We can take a look at, uh, just for the fun of it, we had a nice rendering that um, you'll notice in the render environment. We have cloud rendering in Fusion 360. So I just saved a couple of these views and let it render it off, off in the ether out in the cloud. Uh, oh, that's a 360 one. Let's, uh, let's just go to this view here. Um, so it gives us a nice rendering of this particular design. So, you know, we can see what, what the final result would look like if we got it all sanded and smoothed and polished and all that good stuff. Um, so we're pretty pleased with our design. So then to cut it out, went over to the, the cam side of things. And I, I did a couple of things, you know, on with cam, I tried to do a tool path on this stock that when I cut this pocket out, it would extend to both sides. But what I found, that was a little bit of a pain. So I just created another component um, that was my my main slot, that was the, the overall stock with just that slot cut out. And I generated some tool paths for just that. So you'll notice that I have, let's, uh, let's tell it in here that we're gonna, we will generate the tool pass for that and give it a second to generate those. So I took um, that that main stock and basically I cut out just that pocket there. 
And then, you know, and I use, so I set, I have this set up in two different operations. I have a flat mill. It's just an eighth inch flat mill that I use to, to really clear out a lot of the material. And I actually had, I was pretty cautious. I just got the X controller and first set up doing all of this. So I had small steps, point, uh, point zero 0.04 were my steps. I probably could have doubled my steps and I'd have been totally fine. It took quite a while to cut this because of that. Um, but you can see it, uh, it basically pocketed that out. And then if I take a look at the contour, I have an overall contour that's cutting out all the outer profile. Again, with that um, flat end mill, it's an eighth inch flat end mill. And then I, I um, basically used the contour, I believe it was contour, let's see. Um, oh, pocket clearing for the top face. So basically those were the, the three operations to really clear all the material and cut out the main shape. And then I used a ball mill. Let's just um, generate the tool path for the ball mill. So from here, I did a parallel. So this is kind of a cool one that I just learned the other day. If you come in here to parallel, you can have it cut parallel to your model, and there's an option afterwards to do perpendicular. So if I come in here, there's add perpendicular pass. So I basically grabbed the top two surfaces um, and then told it to do perpendicular. So you'll see it follows the path one way, and it does that all in, in the X direction, and then it comes in the Y direction and it clears everything else out. So it really cleans that up, you know, quite a bit. If I wanted to do smaller steps, it would have required less sanding, but you know, I was I was okay with that. And then from here I added these fillets and I wanted it to do a nice job on the fillet. And the best the best tool that I found for that was um, the the ramp and just selected those fillets. So basically I have two setups. I exported uh, the flat end mill as a post process, and then I I exported the ball um, the ball end mill as a post process. So I basically have two projects that I've exported, and then from here I can go over to Easel, and this is awesome. Um, these guys have uh, Inventables; they've just updated, and I think it's still in kind of beta. Uh, you can request access to get this. But you, you, um, you, you can have the ability to import G code. So in the past, you'd have to go to um, the Universal G code sender, which for me it was kind of a pain. It was okay, but um, this is much, much cleaner. So I can go to the file pull down, import G code. You know, they have instructions if you're using Fusion, MeshCam, you know, other tools. I have mine set up with Fusion. I have the post processor. So in fact, let me step back just for a minute. If you download that post processor, um, when you're coming in and exporting your post, so when you when you when you tell it that you want to send out that post, here I have that Fusion 360 Easel post processor, and it was flawless. It was awesome. So you just download that. I put it in my cloud post, and they have instructions on how to do that. So once I export that, I use that as my my post processor. Then when I come in here and import G code, it's pretty much just brain dead. I can come in and say. Let's grab the flat end mill, that first one, hit open, and it brings in the tool path, and that's pretty much it. From here, I don't have my machine hooked up, but um, you know, if you have the stock in the right position, let's make sure that you know you're you're um, honed in in the the right uh, zero zero, and basically you can hit carve. It doesn't really ask much else, and it just goes. So this was awesome. It was so cool to do this. I, I was pretty excited. Um, first project I've really done with it like this, and it just was, I didn't even have to think about it. So highly recommend if you're if you're using Fusion, um, this is just an awesome way to cut that out. Um, so with that, that was pretty much it. You know, once once I, I ran the first one and then cha changed the bit to be the the ball nose, uh, or the, the, the ball end mill, and from there, ran the second one so then I just re-imported or I imported the second the second pass let me cancel this and go to um, import G code we'll say select uh, the ball nose hit open and so now you'll notice that's the the ball nose ran it and the way I went that was pretty much the, the end result so if I look at the let's go to the pictures here and we'll see the final final cut. We still need to paint it and all of that, but um, you know you can see they've got the fillets in there, 
and um, a little bit of sanding, but looked pretty awesome. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. This was, uh, you know, I think the X-Carve controller was awesome. This is the first time I've used it, and then being able to import in the post-process directly into Easel really gr <laughs> made it a lot easier for me, and my motors had a lot, a lot more power. I've had some problems in the past, and um, that was that was definitely helpful. So anyway, hopefully that that helps you guys.